Hello. We would like to show you a demo of our planning analytics virtual assistant. Yes. Good morning also from, from my side. We will present you uh, some demo cases that we did in over the last uh, months uh, regarding the use of a Watson assistant a chatbot functionalities uh, in planning analytics and also a combination with Watson X AI. So first of all, uh, we created uh, a first use case. Um, to query data in IBM Planning Analytics with the help of a Watson Assistant chatbot. On the right side of the screen, uh, you can see um, the chatbot integrated in, in Planning Analytics. And here in this example, you can ask the chatbot, um, where are empty cells, empty data, where I need to input my data. For that, uh, we've created a, a helping measure called Units Sold uh, Forecast Flag, which will flag the, the data where there is no uh, value at the moment for unit sold. So in this case, um, the chatbot uh, tells you for which um, data there is no no entry at the moment, and you can enter the sales figure um, here as you can see. In this case, in this example, uh, it asks for Massachusetts and uh, retail, um, and then it will look, okay, where are no sales figures at the moment? It will say, okay, it is 5G, 64 gigabyte and L40. And in our example, we want to update this, um, the figures for 64 gigabyte and 5G. And in this case, we will uh, have 700 units sold. And then afterwards, the chatbot will write this data into the cube. As a second use case, we have uh, a data entry validation. In this example, um, the chatbot um, will uh, analyze or will see where there is a, a huge data deviation where you can then adjust the data. In this example, we uh, will adjust the data for L40 and we will adjust it to 600 instead of, as you can, have seen, 648. And we said, okay, this is the only adjustment we want to make in this. Thank you, Michael. I will now present the architecture underlying the Planning Analytics Virtual Assistant. Planning Analytics connected with the Watson X Assistant. The Watson X Assistant has the role to work as a visual interface like a chatbot. And there is a language model included to, in, to identify the intents of a business user. So to identify what is the task uh, a business user wants to trigger with this question. Behind that, we have a functional uh, Python environment. Uh, we call that functional building blocks, where a company can define their use cases in different functional building blocks. And within these functional building blocks, there is a Python code running. The use cases you saw yet, we uh, developed them in Python and used the Python package TM1Py for that. Um, so TM1Py offers us to extract data from a tier one cube and also write data back to a tier one cube. And so the process is the following. The Watson X assistant detects the intent from a user and then triggers the correct functional building block. Then the Python code is running and the result is then written to the tier one cube. So that is that part of the architecture. Furthermore, we developed two advanced use cases. You will see in the following. The first one, an advanced analytics or data science use case, and the second one, a generative AI use case. In our opinion, there are far more use cases than you've seen yet uh, in the direction of data science. Uh, we developed one use case for a time series forecast where a user wants to predict future sales, for example. And uh, in that environment, a data scientist uses Watson Studio to develop a data science model in Python and deploy that model in an endpoint, which can be contacted via REST API. And the model is deployed in Watson Machine Learning. What happens now is that the functional building block interacts with the deployed machine learning model and sends the data, which is read, so the functional building block reads the historical data from a tier one cube, sends the data to deployed model, 
and then writes the given big given back predictions back to the TM1 cube as a separate data version. That is the first use case. The second use case is, yeah, I worked a lot with uh, business units also before IBM, where I worked in the retail and supply chain industry. And one challenge, challenge always was uh, the infusing of domain knowledge, which is very company and industry specific. And therefore, we developed a solution where the business user could ask a question in natural language to a knowledge base. That knowledge base could be documents in a file system, for example, and there could be uh, documents about internal processes, about the industry, uh, about concepts, uh, something like that. Then the business user can ask a question in natural language and get an answer based on that knowledge base. As I said, we used TM1Py to interact from the Python code with the TM1 database. And here we see one use case regarding the data science capability. In that use case, the business user says he wants to do a time series prediction. Then he has the possibility to ingest the relevant parameters. So uh, we developed that functional building blocks here, dynamic. A business user can infuse the relevant parameters, for example, the time period, the product line. So the overall process is dynamic. And we see here that the business user can interact with building block in a way he can infuse prediction period and the uh, products he wants to do a prediction for. The Watson X assistant detects the intent of the business user, triggers the functional building block, the functional building block sends historical data from tier one to the model endpoint and then writes the prediction back to the tier one cube. We see here, we want to do a prediction for the products. The business user mentions here for a defined organization confirms that the forecast period is 2024. And we see here on the left planning analytics and the prediction is written to the TM1 cube for 2024. So we have here a separate data version uh, called forecast, which comes consumes data science output. The next use case is a generative AI use case where we want to ask a question to a company knowledge base. So what we are seeing here is the PAW, not a screenshot, uh, the live version. And we see here our chatbot. For example, uh, I developed the same for Cognos Analytics. The user sees an outlier for hypermarkets, which is a store concept in retail. And he wants to understand more what are hypermarkets. Then he can ask here what are hypermarkets. And then the model writes the output based on a company knowledge base. We use an approach called Retrieval Augmented Generation. For that a company is able to define a knowledge base and based on my ask question the tool or the technology behind extracts the relevant content from the knowledge base and infuses that relevant content into the prompt to the llm and we ask the llm to only answering the question based on the knowledge base that's the process behind. Uh, I prepared a small demo on that. What we see here is the same use case for Cognos Analytics. And I display here the prompt, which is uh, infused to the model. The, the question is the same. What are hypermarkets? What happens now is the relevant content based on the knowledge base is retrieved. We see here the relevant context in form of five paragraphs. We can also infuse here the page number as a source, for example. And then the instruction to the large language model is, please answer the following question only based on the given search results. The answer should be clear and understandable for a business user. And with that, we call the large language model to only answering the following question based on the given search results here. And uh, the question is, what is a hypermarket or what are hypermarkets? And then uh, the large language model answers that based on these five paragraphs. And that is what happens in the background here to answer such, such a question.